hello everybody it's pumpkin and um finally the inside of the mansion the audio tour because everybody just wants to listen to a big mansion she did what she could to include pictures and uh subtitles because it didn't turn out as good as she thought oops anyway um Something to look at is a framing video, because we haven't seen enough of her framing videos yet, either. Okay. Anyway, uh, hope you enjoy it, and um, see you at the end. Okay, bye. Hello everybody! It is Saturday, August 10th, and I am going to frame my uh, pink orchid. Happy birthday to ya! Happy birthday to ya! Happy birthday to ya! Happy birthday, Julie! Happy birthday to ya! Happy birthday to ya! Happy birthday to ya! Happy birthday, Julie! I'm gonna do, I think, ribbon this time. I could cut out the matte paint it and everything, but I'm going to just take the easy way. Now, when I went to the um, Ringling Museum to see the mansion, no videotaping or photographs allowed. So I did record the audio of the tour. Whether or not anybody's interested, I don't know. If you're not, listen to some music and watch the framing. If you're not interested in either one, skip this video. But um, yeah, so I'm gonna play that audio from the tour while I frame this using ribbon, starting from the very beginning of how I'm gonna prepare everything. No commentary, so just, I guess, watch and see how I do it. Doesn't mean it's right, just means that's how I do it. And, uh, Uh, whatever. I don't know. I, I've no. I I have no other comments. Happy birthday, Julie. I've been listening to my favorite murder for days. I'm up to episode twenty. I did not like it in the beginning. I thought it, you know, again, typical Valley Girl ramblings. But now that I've gotten to know the two hosts, it's hilarious. So. Not that they need any promotion because they're like huge, but yeah, I'm hooked on that now. Okay, enough of that. Let me get to work. John married Mabel Burton. John was 39, Mabel was 30. 
and the couple traveled regularly to Europe. John was scouting for circus acts and looking for artwork because he thought he might start a museum someday. But Mabel was looking for ideas for the greenhouse that she would do. The Brigham's first came to Sarasota in 1909, and in 1911, they bought 20 acres right here. But at the time, there was a wood frame house on this property it was called Palms and Leisure. And the Ringlings spent uh, 12 years coming winters to Palms and Leisure. And they, just like you, enjoyed the white sand beaches and the beautiful weather, and boating and fishing and all the other things that Sarasota has to offer. But Sarasota had only about a thousand people at the time. It was, a, it was a little fishing village. But John saw the potential to turn Sarasota into a world-class destination. But he thought that he needed a grand mansion to show off for potential investors and high-profile celebrities in style. So he found an architect, White Jake Baum, out of New York, very famous architect at the time, and did the to design the house. But Mabel told White Bomb, I don't want any of this. I want a Venetian Palazzo, just like the Palazzos I've seen in all my travels in Europe. Construction on this place started in 1924 and was finished just in time for the holidays in 1926. And when it was done, it became the center of Sarasota society. Card parties, luncheon, dinners, dancing, concerts, everything happened. The Ringlings had high profile friends from New York come down and visit and spend time. So well, after you came in the front door, the chauffeur would drop you off, the butler would pick up your luggage, bring you upstairs to one of the five guest bedrooms upstairs. When you had settled in, you'd come back down here for one of the entertainments that Mabel would have prepared for you. And one of the things would have been dancing. Everybody danced in the 1920s. And that would have been in the ballroom. Our next stop. So this is the ballroom, and it's for dancing, and if you have any doubt about that, you look up and look down. Up, you see 22 couples from all over the world dancing. These are all individual canvases painted by Willie Pagani in his New York studio, brought here and installed on the ceiling. Willie Pagani was a very famous book illustrator. He worked for Flo Ziegfeld and as it felt follies, he also did backdrops for all the major motion picture studios. Willie said that even though all of the couples are from various parts of the world, they're all dancing to the same room. Willie also painted four American dances in the four corners. The waltz, the minuet, the foxtrot, and the tango. The 18th century cut glass Venetian mirrors are hung too high to look in. You can't see yourself. They were there to reflect the light so that as you danced, it would be very dramatic. The floor is ancient tea, very hard, very smooth, perfect for dancing, and it extends out into the entryway. So if it was a large party, you could move the furniture out of the way and dance all the way to the other side of the house. The orchestra didn't take up any room. They would be set up out here on the terrace. The coffers were all 23 karat gold. What you heard from the attendant, if you see it, it looks like gold, it probably is gold in this house. So after you had your fill of dancing, you might want to sit down, have a conversation, and that would be in the next room, which is the Great Court. So this is the Great Court. Originally, Mabel wanted this to be open to the sky, like a Venetian Palazzo. However, Dwight Braun, the architect, said, Sarasota, that's not going to be very practical. A lot of rain, a lot of humidity, a lot of mosquitoes. So he enclosed it. But what he did is he put in this wonderful skylight 30 feet above the floor and these wonderful French doors that he opened up. And he used the same terracotta tile and capitals inside that were on the outside. So the outside came in. It made that effect that they would want it to have. The skylight was framed in steel girders, but the girders were covered in pecky cypress. Pecky cypress is bald cypress wood that has been infested with a fungus, and when it's sliced into boards, it shows that marvelous texture. The Ringlings had a young artist 
Robert Webb paint Venetian symbols on the pentecyclos, just like would be in a Venetian blocks. And it looks old now, and it looked old when Robert Webb painted it, because he used an abrasive to rub it down and then covered it with butter to make it look old. The furniture here is exactly the way that they will have it. And this is the original furniture. This is not pieces found from somewhere else. This is her stuff. And it's arranged the way she had. She wanted to do a conversation groups so people could have an intimate conversation. Much of the furniture came from a Gilded Age mansion in New York were being torn down. Right along Fifth Avenue, they were being replaced by commercial skyscrapers. And the contents were available at auction. And the railings were frequent uh, buyers at those auctions. So these two chairs here came from the Astor, the Vincent Astor House. And they show Mabel's love for textiles, this beautiful needlework. And you have the tapestry in the, in the chairs and in the uh, room divider. The chandelier came from the Waldorf Astoria Hotel that was torn down for the New York, uh, for the Empire State. Something you don't see necessarily here is the beautiful Aeolian organ. That's the console, and when you walk by it, you can see the three keyboards. There are 2,288 pipes behind the tapestries. somewhere else, not, 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 not local. The Peggy Cypress was local, and there's some other little things local. These green blinds came from Vermont. The Burlington Venetian Blind Company it was the only place we could find the green that she wanted. The windows are European hand-blown glass, and in most cases, these are the original glass. They're in five jewel tone colors, Sapphire, topaz, amethyst, garnet, and emerald. And they will pick those five colors to the They have lasted. Now, um, there is a 3M coating on the outside of these that help keep them from shattering. But um, here in Sarasota, we've been very lucky. Even though there have been some hurricanes go by, we had Irma a couple of years ago and Charlie a few years before that, we've never been hit directly. And so Kazan has stood up pretty well. But you can see how that, that has a warm glow into the room. It's just marvelous. Kazan was a self-contained resort. Out here on the dock, John uh, docked his 125-foot uh, yacht, the Zalathus. Uh, there was a tennis court over here, a clay tennis court. They had the swimming pool. They had a white sand beach. So the guests here would have their fill of anything they wanted. So our next stop is going to be in the dining room. We're going to walk through the kitchen and the pantry. We'll get back to those rooms later in the tour, so sort of just keep up. But as you're walking, look to your right. You'll see the tap room. We'll talk about that in the dining room. Afternoon, school is the main class. And so it was illegal for alcohol. But John had the salad. Cuba was only a couple hundred miles away, so he had no trouble keeping stock of uh, wine in there. So, Salatus was the name of his boat, 125 foot yacht, uh, means sea lion in Latin. And it was a marvelous machine, 4,000 mile radius uh, cruising range. It sank in 1930. He loaned it to a friend who ran into a rock. <laughs> <laughs> So this is the dining room. It's one of the most opulent rooms in the house. 
It's a mixture of styles, Renaissance and Moorish. The ceiling looks like wood, but it's not. It's plaster. It's painted by Robert Webb to look like wood. And for inspiration on all these symbols up here, he used Mabel's uh, jewelry and silverware. The furnishings all came from the Darlington Estate in Mawa, New Jersey. We have Caldwell Chandelier and this marvelous table. This is uh, lace that uh, Mabel collected in Europe with little poofies. This is museum quality lace. She just had a thing about things. The chairs are one of the first examples of machine embroidery in America. This is, this is a silk velvet machine embroidered in the backs, and this is original. The, the seats have been replaced, but the backs are original. The table is about 10 feet long, and it has one leaf in it, but it could accommodate up to 20 leaves. And when it had all those leaves in it, it was 38 feet long, and it would be moved into the end. So if we had a big party, that, that's where we would hold it. So let's go take a look at those about these. So this is the entryway, but it was also large enough to entertain. Like I said, they moved the table in here and had large dinner parties here. Mabel also had her bridge parties here. We know that because when we opened up this chest, there were her monogram bridge decks and scoring tablets. That's a reproduction chest. It's uh, Louis XV, exactly like the one that Louis XV himself had in his Versailles palace. Over here is the Otis elevator. Everything in this house was up to date and modern. This is one of the first examples of an elevator in a residential home. Right now it's not working, but when it's working, it goes from the basement all the way up to the fourth floor. These throne chairs are another example of things that the Greenlands collected from auctions. These were from the uh, George J. Gould estate. These were restored, but these are the original chairs and the original bathroom. The staircase here is uh, Carrera marble all the way up, imported from Italy, and Sierra marble also. The Sierra marble is on the hand. Uh, we estimated it was 1.5 million in that day, which roughly comes out to 22 million uh, in today's dollars. But that was just the house. The tapestries, some of the furnishings, that was several million dollars more. And that doesn't include the art, because it's probably seven million on top of that. The original budget for the house that, that John gave Mabel, $225,000. <laughs> so this is John's bedroom. In that day, it was not uncommon for upper scale people to have separate bedrooms, uh, couples to have separate bedrooms. John had his bedroom set so that he could look out over Sarasota Bay to his investment property. And at the time, he owned all of Longboat Key, all of Amans, all of Otter, all of, uh, he owned everything out there in the Puget Sound. It came that way. Uh, that's the only reason. He bought this set at auction. It's an empire style set. Uh, it's, uh, Inspired by a set that's in Malmont that was built for Napoleon. It's not Napoleon set, but it was designed by the same furniture company. It's all the And it's got wing victories, it's just and it's crowns, and laurel wreaths, all symbols of victory and triumph. And so John could feel like a temple when he went together. That is the real phone. It doesn't work anymore, but that was John's phone. The house was wired for both telephones and teletypes, uh, so that we get stock market. And that was also very advanced at the time. On the ceiling, John had a painting. It was called John Driving Away in the Darkness by Yaga Vivid, 1615. This was something that John would have seen on his travels in Europe. And so he wanted one just like it. The painting on the wall is Josephine Bonaparte Borghese, the wife of Napoleon Bonaparte, no, I'm sorry, the sister of Napoleon Bonaparte. And John bought this painting partly because J.P. Morgan had expressed an interest in it. This was one of John's earliest acquisitions. And John had very humble backgrounds. He, he didn't come from a wealthy family. 
And so he didn't know a lot about pain. And one of the reasons he bought this one was because if J.P. Morgan wanted it, it was probably worth buying. But John didn't let that go long. He bought books about painting and art. And they, some of them are in his bookcase here, right around the corner. He had a thousand books that he bought and read until he became well-versed in the art world. And he bought lots of paintings and lots of very good paintings. In the closet here, we have examples of John's clothing. This, these are not props. These are his clothes. John Greenland himself wore those hats, used those canes, put on those jackets. He was one of the best dressed men in America, had all of his clothes custom made in New York and Paris and London. All of the molding around the doors and around the ceiling, 23 karat gold leaf. So if you peek into his bathroom, you'll see that the walls are all done in Sienna, um, Sienna marble, or um, nice yellow toned marble. The bathtub is a single block of Sienna marble carved out. A single block. Huh? The fixtures are all gold plated, and you've got hot and cold running fresh water, hot and cold running salt water. So, this was John's room, and it's connected by a nice little balcony and a connecting corridor to Mabel's room, which is the next stop on our tour. So this is Mabel's bedroom. This is her personal retreat. She had a view out uh, over her rose garden. You can't see it today because the banyan trees have grown up, but in her day, you could see that rose garden. That was one of the first things that she did when they bought the property here. It was started in 1913. Mabel was an avid gardener. She was the first president of the Founders Circle, which is a garden club in Sarasota that still exists today. This furniture is all made by Francois Link, a very famous Parisian cabinet maker. Mabel saw Francois Link and his work at the St. Louis Exposition in 1904. And when she married John in 1905, she said, oh, now I can get that set of furniture that I've been looking at. And you can see it was custom made for her. And he's got monkeys on tight ropes. She was a very whimsical kind of a person. The sandalwood is tulip wood in Kingdom. Gorgeous. The bedspread is lace that Mabel collected in her travels in Europe. It's a combination of Irish and Italian and uh, Belgium lace and stitched together, and we think that Mabel may have stitched it herself. The wall covering, it's not wallpaper, it's canvas, hand painted by Robert Webb. Every line painted with paper. So you can see the difference in the demeanor of John. John is a very bombastic, loud room with Napoleon, and Mabel's a quieter, softer, more at ease. So you can understand more about the Ah, good question. We're not exactly sure. We believe that they are a, a more Venetian symbols like there are in the court. And we believe that these uh, punctuation marks are a private joke between Mabel and Robert Webb. We believe that what it says is Mabel would make a statement, exclamation point. And then two days later, she questioned what she'd done. And then she give another order as a question. <laughs> and Robert Webb painted this and told Mabel what he'd done. And Mabel was so pleased, she said, leave it. I like it. <laughs> See, so she had a real good sense of humor. She was very concerned with the comfort of her guests. So she had special linens, towels, and uh, sheets, and blankets, all made special for her guests. We'll see some examples of those here in her boudoir as we pass through. And these are original to the house. You'll see Mabel's monogram on, on the limits. So take a look at that as we walk. This is the first prime guest bedroom of this floor. There's also another guest bedroom, second guest bedroom in the floor. The five guest bedrooms on this floor are all the same five colors in the glass windows. This is the purple or amethyst room. There's a gold room a green room, a blue room, and a rose, a, a rose color. So this is uh, Louis XV furniture, carved and painted wood. This was original to the house. This is what was here. 
because this guest bedroom shared a, a uh, access to Mabel's boudoir, you have to be very special to stay here. We know that Mabel's four sisters and her mother stayed, <coughs> and this is probably where they would stay. One thing about all the guest bedrooms is that the inside of the closet door and the inside of the medicine chest have been painted by Robert Webb. Mabel gave Robert a uh, postcard that she collected in Europe and said, I want you to put this on the inside of the doors so when my guests open the door, they'll be surprised and amused. Here's another one of those buttons. There's a button like this in almost every room. And we'll talk about that next when we go down to the paint. So this is the pantry. This is, this is part of the service area of the house. The staff, the seven person staff, live and work in this house, in this section. This is a big, airy room, very bright. It's got this wonderful clean wall, which made you feel a little bit cooler even though the room was possibly activity. In the Ringling's time, the king had a little bit of arsenic in it. The uh, china here is Mrs. Ringling's original china. These are not props, this is her china. We've got a Tiffany luncheon set. We've got bone china from uh, Crown Chelsea in Lakewood. And we have an earthenware set. The sink is very, very special. It's called a German silver sink. It's not silver, it's an alloy of nickel and zinc and copper. A little bit softer, so if the thing would fall on it, they wouldn't necessarily break. We saw those buttons upstairs. There's a button like that in almost every room. If you press the button, you would ring here on this enunciator. The bell would ring, and the little arrow would point to where the button was pressed. We ate the meals before they went into the dining room or into the breakfast room. They took the tables set up in here, and the food would be prepared in the kitchen, and it would be kept in the warming oven here until everything was ready. It was safe right around the corner. They kept the silver in the sink. So here we are in the kitchen, and you can see that like everything else, they want it to be the most up-to-date. They have a Westinghouse automatic electric brain, very advanced for its time. They've also got a gas oven, actually two gas ovens uh, bolted together, one of which has a smooth top, which is innovative for its time. They've got a real refrigerator. This is at a time when it was much more common to have ice boxes, where a family put a block of ice and left for a couple of days. These were real refrigerators. There's one here, one in the pantry we just left, and one in the chapel. This one here in the kitchen has a compartment that's large enough for an entire side of the unit. The stoves were arranged in exactly this configuration in the ring of That's because they cook. A woman named Sophie Collins wanted to be able to stand between them and cook on both sets of stoves. This is the Venetian Palazzo that Mabel Ringling wanted to looks a lot like the Doge's Palace in Venice. You've got elements of all other palaces like Cod d'Oro and the Bauer Grunwald Hotel. And it's just ma magnificent. This is everything that you wanted. Karazan means House of John in Venetian, but it's really more the House of Mabel. <laughs> so uh, for three seasons, this was everything that John and Mabel wanted it to be. Sadly, it was a premature end. Mabel passed on in 1929 due to uh, Addison's disease and, com and complications of diabetes. John stayed for about seven more years. He came down here winters for about seven more years. But he wanted to leave the house and the art museum and the grounds to the state of Florida. He wanted that to be his legacy.
I almost forgot to show you my whips. So I finished the peacock. This was a lot of fun. Um, I love working with the, the special shaped diamonds and everything. I really enjoyed it. As far as lighting it up from behind, um, let me see. Yeah, you really don't get much of, a, of an effect, but it, you know, it's still very cute. I guess if anything, what's lighting up is the little plastic pins that hold the the peacock in there. And I guess you can see a little bit of light through the feathers. But I very much enjoyed that. Again, thank you, Anna, for that. And um, let's see, where's my other one? Oh, I think it's out in the living room. Yeah, it's out in the living room. I haven't really worked on the cross stitch. Um, for a little while because I did the peacock and then I've been working on the needle point. I haven't done enough to even bother showing you that, but okay. Brian just got home. Jasmine's going crazy. And uh, all of my completeds now are up on the wall. But obviously, you know, I have room to keep adding more there. And all right, I'm going to go have some family time. There's my little peacock lit up. Okay, bye guys. Now isn't that better than just seeing it for yourself? Anyway, um, it's the Ringling Mansion in Sarasota, Florida. And uh, hey, add it to your, your things, your bucket list. Because it was, it was really, really very, very fun. Cool things to see. Very impressive home. And uh, put it on your bucket list. Yeah, it's, it's, we recommend. It's a good one. Okay, see you in the next one. Hey, she's going kayaking. Maybe she'll videotape that. Okay, bye guys.